Welcome back aliens, my name is Devin Reddy and let's continue with this series on Django. Now till this point we were able to fetch data from database and then we were able to display those destinations on the page. But then we are missing one big thing and that is the login and registration. Of course right when you build an application, uh, that application will be having a lot of users. Now some of the users will be admin and then we have worked with the admin user details as well right so we have created the admin now admin can add data to the to the website from the backend of course but what if you want to work with normal users yes you can create accounts for them as well right so let's say uh, for your application you have 10 users so what you will do you will manually create accounts for them now that is possible and then you can give a login form to them they can simply log in through your application okay now that is one way the other way is you can have a registration form for users so that they can register themselves. Now that makes much more sense, right? To have a login and registration form for your application. But if you know that you will be having limited predefined users, admin will add all the users. But here, let's create two forms, one for login, one for registration. But initially, we'll start with registration. There are certain things we have to change. Now, first of all, uh, since we have restarted the machine, so I have to make sure that we are working in the environment. So if you go back here, first of all, I have to say work on test. And then we need to run the server because if you go back to the browser, if I say enter, uh, you can see server is not running so i have to run the server first i will say python so we have to say python manage.py run server and then this will run the server okay so you can see we are running the server now let's go back here and we got our page okay this is what we wanted right so what we need here is we want to say login and registration now for that where you will put it so of course right in your form this there should be a way where you can uh, keep your login and registration button. So now instead of changing the existing design uh, since we don't have a predefined form for registration so we'll change here itself. So let's have hope about us. We don't want services and news. We'll remove that and we'll change that with uh, login and registration. In fact, we can also remove contact there. But then if you want to have those features, of course, you will be having two forms as well. Now, as we have discussed in the previous sessions that whenever you want to create something different, example, we have worked with a calculator, uh, then now we are working with a travel application. Now, if you want to have the user registrations, you know, login, logout, registration, you can create a separate module for it. You have a choice. You can still continue with the same app that makes much more sense while you're learning. But what also makes sense is to, to learn something new, right? Why do we create modules? Now you can have two different modules here, right? We have registration model, uh, we can have a traveler module so that we can reuse the module. So let's say if you want to use this module for some other application, we should be able to do that, right? So let's create a separate module here. And that will be, so let me just click here and let's create a module for accounts. So how do we do it? It's very easy. We have done that before. So we can simply say python manage.py and then we have to say start app and then we have to mention the name, which is in this case, I will say accounts. You can go for any name. It doesn't matter actually. Uh, so we go for account and we got an error. Oh, okay. So we have to make sure that we are working in the environment. So I missed that. Let me just do that quickly. Now, since we have using a new command prompt, so we have to say work on test and now let's again hit that same thing and now you can see we got the app named as account so if you go back here there should be account so you can see that we have accounts here uh, we don't want to work with media anymore let's use the disco templates is required okay so you can see we got accounts here and if i expand accounts it's a new app now and that's why you can see we don't have urs.py so we also need that so first of all let's create it so I will go back to the accounts and we need a urls.py because we will be working with at least three links, login, registration and logout. Uh, so let's do that here. Now I don't want to type it from scratch. We will be copying it from Travelo. So let's go back to Travelo's URL. Let's copy this and go back to our URL and paste. This is the new urls.py we are creating. So what will change? The first thing is we have to say pattern, yes, path. Uh, let me just get that on new line. Anyway, the moment I say uh, save, it will go back to its previous position. But let's change it till now. So the URL which we need here should not be blank because that's for the main application, which is for Travelo. So what will be the URL here? Now, first one, we need three, right? So let's start with registration and then we can add login and logout later. So let's, let's say register. And in the index, we have to say register. Of course, you can go with any name, but 
let's go for the registration and register so you can see we got a url mapping for register so if someone is calling register uh, we will be calling this but you can see we got an error now it's obvious right we are working from a long time now we know what will be going wrong here the in views.py now the views.py of uh, the new app which we have done so if you go back to views.py you can see we don't have anything here so basically we have to get a function which will be having a name as register okay so we will be doing that but do you think it will work if even if i do that actually not the moment you create a new app if you remember every time you get a new app and if you have your own urls.py you have to map it with the original urls.py and we have not done that so let's do that quickly. Uh, let's go back to the URL of the disco. This is the main uh, URL mapping we have. And we have to add one more here. So we'll give a comma that's already there. So we'll say path. And this time uh, we have admin. Now it's time for accounts. Now here we have to include the URLs of accounts, right? So we have to say include. And in bracket, we have to say accounts.urls. The same thing we have done for traveler, remember? But Traveler is the main module which is working with the slash or the home URL. But if you want to access accounts, we'll be using account slash. Okay, so whatever URL like login, logout will be accounts slash login, account slash logout. Okay, so that uh, makes sense. We have done with this part as well, just to finish things quickly. Okay, uh, but now it's important to work with this views.py. But now what? So basically what we have done is we have created this new app, which is accounts, and then uh, we have mapped the URL. So whenever URL comes, it will come to the views.py. So we can set dev.register and we have to accept a request. Okay, and then we can't keep a, a function blank, so we'll simply say pass. Basically, we have created the function, but it's not doing anything now. But then if you want to make it work, of course, you need to call a URL, right? And that will be coming from the index.html. This is where I want that button of registration. So basically, we need three buttons, login, logout, and registration. As of now, let's only talk about registration because that's what important. Uh, so I will go back here and let me remove all this about and the services and news.py. So let's have index.html and contacts there. And in between, I want to have registration or maybe you can do it afterwards. And we'll say copy this and we'll paste. Now this is where instead of having contact.html, we will be saying register. But if you remember, register belongs to accounts now. So we can't simply say register here. So we have to say accounts slash register. So let's change this contact to register. And our job is done. Let's verify if it is working. So let's go back to the uh, home page and say refresh. And you can see we got home, contact and register. The moment you click on this, it will call the function which is register, which is doing nothing. Can you see that? We got an error. It says what? Uh, it says a view accounts dot register didn't return a HTTP response. Uh, that's important, right? We can't simply say pass. That should not, that will not work. So we have to do some programming there. So let's do it. So basically you have to go to views.py and here you have to call the page which is registration. So we'll say, so how do we call that? So we'll say return and we have to render a page by passing the request object first and the page name is register. So we'll say register.html. But now you will say we don't have this page and you're right, we don't have this page. So we need to create a register.html. So we'll do that in template here and let's create click. I will say register html now we can have a very simple page here nothing complex uh, maybe in our template actually we don't have a registration or html so that we can get a good view let's create a simple registration form again you can make it uh, i mean you can have an amazing ui after that uh, that's your choice but let me make it simple so i will say i want a basic html sample first of all and in the body i want to create a form so first of all, let me set the title as registration. In the body, we have to get a form and form action. Now what it will call? I would say it will call register. And since we are submitting data now, we have to say method equal to post. So we got a form and then we have to find some fields. Now, first of all, we don't know how many fields we require here. Maybe we need two fields, three fields, five fields. Now, first of all, when you say you want to register the data, now this registration will go to the server, right? And on the server side, we have database. Oh. First of all, we don't have a database here. So we need to create a database first so that this data will go there. Now, what if I say you don't have to create a database? If you remember, when we said migration, remember when we talked about migration, it has created a lot of tables in your database. One of the table is for users. 
right? It's so simple. Let's see if that works. Let's go to PG admin just to verify if we have the database available or table available. So when I open my PG admin, if I go back to the database, where is that? Is it Postgres 11? Yes, in that we have the RISCO database. And you can see we have a table here with, which is auth user, right? And if I say view all data, in fact, we have used it when we were working with super user and you can see we already have two users here. We got Kiran and Naveen, but both these users are actually super user. You can see we are saying true and true. So basically they can log in through the admin panel as well. But we, now we want to create a normal user, not super users. Uh, so we have this table already and then in this table you can see if I show you columns, uh, we have ID, we don't have to worry about ID that is auto-generated. Uh, we have to worry about password, last login also something which it will take care of. So we need password, we need username, right? We also need first name, last name. In fact, those are optional, but let's, let's use that. We have email, uh, we'll ask that from the user. Date join, you, uh, it will pick up the system date. So the fields are password, username, first name, last name, and email. So basically we need five fields. Let's do that. Let's go back to our form and let me quickly use it. But since we are getting a form, we have to remember one more thing. We have to use CRF token, right? We have talked about it before. Uh, so let's take a... So once we got CSRF token, now we have to create those fields. Let's do that quickly. So we got input type text and then we want to have a name for it. Let's start with uh, the first name. I will say first underscore name. That's what the name in the database is. So yeah, so first underscore name. And then we'll have a placeholder and the placeholder will be first name. This is something which will be showed in the text field. Of course, you can also have a label here, but just to keep it simple, I'm going for first name there. And job is done. Let's have a BR tag. I'm just trying to keep it as simple as possible. Copy. Now, how many fields we need here? So basically we need five, right? So let's do that. We got five. In fact, we need one more. When you say password, if you remember, when you, whenever you go to any website for registration, we have two password fields. One is password and second is confirm password. We'll do that here as well. So we'll say six fields. So the second one is the last name. Here as well as the last. The next field will have username and here we'll have username and the next field is email ID. In fact, what we'll do for email, let's skip email, right? So type will be of type email. For next one, we'll say password. Or maybe I will say password one because we have two passwords here, right? So this will be again password, password two, and this is confirm password. Okay, and then the type would be password, done. We got our form here, right? But how will you verify this? Let's try, so I will save this code. Uh, in fact, we have done all the coding required to get this form at least. Let's go back to our browser and say refresh. And you can see we got our form. And we also got placeholder. We got a first name, last name, username, email, password, and we got a, a confirm password. The button is missing. Okay, can you believe that? Okay, so we need to also get a button there. We'll say input type is equal to submit. We got a submit button as well. Let's go back here, refresh, and we got button as well. Now, let's check if this is working from the home page. From there, we want to call this page. I will say enter. And you can see we got register, click on register, we got the form. But then this code will not work. Even if you submit the details here, it will not save the data in database because we have not done the actual coding as of now. And that we'll be doing in the next video. So in this particular video, we have created a special app, which is for account, in which we'll be doing login, registration, and logout. And time when we have created the page for registration so that a user can register itself. But this code will not work because the coding is still remaining. So that we'll see in the next video. I hope you are enjoying the entire series. Let me know in the comment section and do subscribe for another video. Bye.